Well, good afternoon. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. It's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania, Zone 6. You know, it's early springtime here. And today I thought I would share some tips and ideas with you on how to direct sow Swiss chard Ford Hook Giant in your vegetable garden. And so thanks for joining me today. Well, anyhow, I'm sitting at the end of my four foot by 32 foot raised garden bed. And this is where I'm gonna be planting my Swiss chard here. I always plant my Swiss chard right here. And you know, most of my beds, I topped off with about two to three inches of compost every year. And really, I don't do a whole lot of crop rotation here, maybe my carrots. Uh, but you know, in my 18 foot by 32 foot raised garden bed, right over there. I've planted my tomatoes and peppers there basically in the same spot for years and same with my broccoli and I've had no problem with that. And so I'm going to be planting this, this Swiss chard right in this area, a couple rows. And you know I have here right in front of me here a soil temperature condition for vegetable seed germination chart. It's from Alabama Cooperative Extension System. I got this online. But here it tells you that the soil temperature, minimum and optimum for when you direct sow your seeds in the garden. And on the left here, they have a list of vegetables and then your optimum, minimum and maximum soil temperatures. And what you want to do is you can use a, a meat thermometer here. And you just place it in the soil. And uh, you know, our soil temperature right now is about 48 degrees. It's going to warm up real quick with, you know, a lot of sun coming up in the week ahead. And so uh, it's really helpful to use these charts as, so it gives you an idea of when you can direct sow out in your garden. And so, you know, behind every seed chart or seed package, they always give some helpful information here. It says here, Swiss chard Ford Hook Giant is a good hot weather spinach substitute because it is in the spinach family. You know, where spinach bolts in your garden when the heat comes. And so this uh, Swiss chard, we just love Swiss chard here in our family. But Ford Hook's white stalks are excellent prepared like asparagus too. An old favorite with glossy dark green leaves. Nice mild flavor makes it great in stir fry, raw or baked. Keep picked for extended harvest. And that's the, the nice thing about this, these greens like your collard greens or your kale, your Swiss chard here, is that it's pick and come again. So as long as you pick the outer stalks, it'll continue to produce right through the summer season. So, you know, this pack was un of seeds was under $2 in cost. And so if you planted a couple of rows of these, you could feed your whole family for, you know, a couple dollars, your greens or your kale or, you know, uh, spinach. And so you can, you know, by growing your own food, you can also save a lot of money. Also, you know where it came from it's, and that it's all organic and pesticide free. But so here on the back, it tells you planting depth about half inch. I plant anywhere from half inch to one inch. And you, it says here thin to about eight to 10 inches, but it all depends on how large you want your plants to get. You might, might find you want to thin these out to about 12 inches apart. And then it, you know, it says uh, sun here, but you know, greens uh, can use about four to six hours of sunlight. Where if you have something with a root or a fruit, you know, like a potato or a carrot, uh, you know, they like a good eight hours of sunlight. You know, your melons, peppers, uh, tomatoes, you know, a good eight hours of sunlight, the more the better. I grew some Swiss chard under my row cover a couple years ago, the one behind the camera there, 
and the one stalk on this Swiss chard plant, the Fort Hope Giant, was 42 inches tall, and the leaf itself was 24. And so, you know, I'm growing this in my composted leaf mulch, amended with topsoil, and then throughout these beds I do add my alfalfa pellets, and, and this year I've been using more of the soy meal as well. The soy meal is a little higher in protein. So anyhow, why don't we get started planting these uh, Swiss chard seeds. You also want to make sure you work through your soil with your garden fork, you know, so it's nice and loose and friable. You know, that way your roots will spread far and wide because the wider the roots grow out, they are able to absorb more nutrients in the soil resulting in a healthier uh, plant. And so this is something going to be really quick and easy to do. I'm just going to get my hand and, and create a furrow here at, back about eight inches from the end and then go about another 12, 12 inches, maybe 14 inches. And then get your seed pack. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to pour these out in my hand this time and place these in the soil every couple inches. And then you can, you know, uh, even when these seedlings start to pop their heads above the soil and get a maybe two, three inches tall, you can transplant these seedlings in other sections of your garden. And so it never hurts to put a little bit more seed in the soil. And so you just gently set them in. You want to make sure your soil is pretty fine that you're planting these seeds into. I kind of think of a nice plush mattress, you know. Because you want your seeds to have good contact with the soil. I just need a few more seeds here. And then just drop them in. I have a few extra here put back in the pack. And then you can just take your hand or your, if you have a small rake or something and backfill it. Tamp it down real good. It never hurts to, to mark your rows. I take usually a, a couple rocks from my garden for my shale here and mark where each row is. And then you just want to just gently backfill. You want to make sure there's not any big clumps because again you want your seeds to have good contact with the soil. And then I have my watering can here. You just want to make sure your Seeds are kept nice and moist, especially during the germination period. Probably take about seven to ten days for these to, to germinate. And then what I have here is I have a, a cutoff or a remnant of my spun bonded polyester. And I want to cover my seeds with this cloth. It'll help hold in the soil moisture and also keep the deer off of here and any critters that might want to, you know, dig in the soil. And so anyhow, I hope this helps you see how easy it is to direct sow some of these seeds out in your garden. And you can also sow them in, uh, in pots, you know, in your balcony or deck. You know, again, as long as you have for your greens a, a good four to six hours of, of sunlight. So anyhow, I just want to thank you for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. And you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how to reclaim your health. So anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day today. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.